commodity prices are jumping. For more on what it's all going to mean for the spring housing market, I'm joined by Ryan Gorman, a president and CEO of Coldwell Banker Real Estate. Uh, Ryan, so this is a seller's market for sure. What's yeah. the dynamic between cities and suburbs as we see things starting to open up again? Are the suburbs still hot? Suburbs are definitely still hot. One of the differences may be that everything is hot. Virtually every category, price point, and product type right now is extremely attractive. We have certainly uh, far more buyers than we have sellers right now. And that's part of the reason why about 20% of all homeowners today are considering selling in the next 12 months. So if you don't have to buy, why would you? I mean, if there's low inventory, prices are high, you know, I, I know interest rates are, are heading higher, so maybe that's a reason, but we could end up with a correction in this market, could we not? It's possible, of course, always. However, the demand right now has been incredibly organic and sustainable. So part of the reason why homeowners right now are a little more reluctant to sell is the tight inventory, just as you mentioned. But more than a third of homeowners cited in Cole Banker's survey that one of the reasons they're concerned about selling is just COVID-19 and the potential physical risks of bringing people in. So part of what we're doing is making sure they understand how they can safely transact. But really, the big drivers for sellers today are the drivers that have been true for a long time with a bit of a twist. So upsizing, nearly 40% of all potential sellers are considering upsizing. The value increase they could capture from selling today, more than 30% of sellers are looking at that. The pandemic twist is about 30% are considering working remotely more permanently, and they might be willing to sell and move to different areas. About 40 to 60% are considering moving out of the city or state where they live. Now, overall, when people aren't selling at the, at the rate that they have in the past, when commodity prices are higher, so I imagine that's affecting prices in the new home market, it's got to be hard for first-time home buyers to get in, right? Extremely difficult for first-time home buyers, absolutely. So you need to come with an extremely strong offer and, of course, have a strong trusted advisor at your side to make sure that you're making the strongest offer possible as you narrow down what you're looking at. But for most home buyers getting into the market today, you need to be prepared for definitely multiple offer situations and have the strongest possible credit to step in. What is the impact on that credit from some of the disruptions that we've seen to the workforce and work history over the past year? I mean, I imagine for a lot of people that that's complicating this, right? Certainly complicating. Uh, for better or for worse, what we've seen is some of the greatest disruption is not necessarily among existing or likely home buyers, unfortunately. So those who have uh, been seeking to enter the market, for the most part, aren't seeing a dramatic credit decrease. Now, credit is still very tight. So one of the things we need to keep in mind in today's market as people compare it to, for instance, the market before the Great Recession is we still have very tight and strong underwriting standards. So you still need relatively high credit. That's not keeping most buyers on the sidelines, though, right now, as we see far more buyers than we have sellers. What's the impact of platforms like Airbnb on this market? I mean, I imagine that there are sellers, potential sellers, who would have sold in the past, but now think, well, let me hold on to that. Let me rent it out, uh, whether it's on one of those platforms or in another way. Certainly, in a lot of the core urban markets, as well as a lot of the resort markets, you see an impact of short-term rentals. You even see cities and some areas of homeowner associations taking action to try to limit that. I don't think that's what's keeping most inventory on the sidelines, though, today. I think that tight inventory market is the biggest driver. And I do think with nearly 20 percent of all homeowners in our survey looking to at least explore the market in the next 12 months, we could see those higher prices pulling inventory into the market, which is certainly needed.